Thursday, the Ron and Fez Show, XM202. All right, right as we were doing our intro music, I ran down to use the bathroom. And I think there was a little etiquette mistake that uh, a gentleman had made. You know how we have the three stalls, right? Yes. I walk in. Uh, this guy is just finds himself. There's uh, no one but him, and he's at center stall. All right, you're not Paul Lynn on Hollywood Square. You've got to when there's no but the only way you go to that middle stall is if the other two are already being used. The middle stall should be the cleanest out of any of yeah. them because it should be the least used. You you have three urinals. First thing you do, you go far left. Mm -hmm. If someone's there, you go far right. If both of them, then you use the middle. But you would never walk up by yourself because there's there's. There's no thing in your mind that would make you think, I can go in here, finish my business fast enough before someone needs one of these other stalls. I just looked at him. I go, did two guys just leave real fast? There was two twins in here who finally felt like they had to go. If not, you made a giant faux pas, my friend. Yeah. Now, I, I think that's a problem. You won't even use a urinal, will you? Oh, no, I won't. No, I have to go into a stall just to piss. Yeah. Yeah, I have got the pee shine. You, you have to have a uh, door or you can't go. I have to have some sort of structure around me. Why? I don't know. It's just uh, nothing will work How if, about if I'm out in the open like that. Can you go outside? No, never. No, I would feel like a target. But what? <laughs> like, a, like a buffalo on the prairie. <laughs> what if we do this? I take Harry down to the bathroom with you. And he goes in with you, and you try to go in front of him. There would be no way. What, I, I wouldn't be able to produce a trickle. What if he goes same times, and you do the sword fight like everybody used to do with their cousin when you were little? <laughs> I don't think that's going to help any. That's the weird thing for you, huh? And Harry's unarmed. You uh, is, is it a thing of you don't want anybody to see you, or you... It's just such a shameful act to me. <laughs> Urination? <I> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You were abused. You were so abused as a kid. I don't want anyone to hear that sound. Yeah. You know? Now, the uh, the other night, uh, you and I and Wiki, he, he took us out for a, a lovely dinner at Elaine's on the Upper East Side. Very famous restaurant. Very uptown. A gay Talese, the writer, happened to be there. The guy from Parade Magazine, James Brady. Yeah. You know, so it's like older writers, very dignified, been around a long time. And a lot of Hollywood elite stuff in there. So I'm having a great meal with you guys. We're having a great conversation. Everything's terrific. I go back. I use the uh, bathroom, and it's one of those little New York kind of cubby holes. Like sometimes you're, you're almost going sideways to get to a bathroom in New York. Like if they didn't put a toilet in it, it would only hold brooms. So I make my way all the way back in there, and there's only uh, a couple toilets and no urinal at all. I go to the far one. I'm, in, I'm using it. I'm reading some you know stuff up on the wall. And uh, a minute passes, and I hear this little, <coughs> and I hear a cough that was too high for any male to make. And I just lean back and see about a 60-year-old woman fixing her makeup. I'm in the ladies' room. <laughs> oh, man. At a restaurant that this would really be... You know what I mean? Like, I'm not in the ladies' room at a Hooters right. or, you know, the Limelight, some club downtown where someone's going to let me get away with this. This was going to have a woman shrieking like a rat ran between her legs. This is a place where you get asked to leave for those yeah. sort of things. And she was and so... Your party. She was so dignified because she heard the, you know, the long, deep sounds of a male. There's no way a woman would hold the piss this long. So I'm just really... I'm just hitting the male piss as deep as I can. You never hear anyone say, that lady was pissing like a racehorse. Yeah. You and never I, hear that. And I was. <laughs> There's, this definitely, this piss had a penis attached to the upper end. There's no other way to do it. This could only be coming out of a super soaker. And she just gave me the very polite, <clears throat> <laughs> you know, very Upper East Side, Fez. And fixed her makeup. Yeah. And like she had another piece of business to do. Right. Other than, you know, to let you get out. Right. You know, she could continue working on her face, on her pancake. And I, you know, I didn't even wash my hands when I left there. I just wiped my dick off on her dress and just, <laughs> as uh, with as much dignity as I could, walk out of there. Good for you. Yeah. See, I wouldn't end up in that situation because I, I wouldn't go in the bathroom anyway. I, you don't use a public restroom at all. It has to be an emergency. I mean, I have to be just busting yeah. to go. 
Really? Even and, and that's the only way I can go in public. I have to, like, if I'm going to go out... It has to be almost like a bladder infection for you to go. Exactly. I have to be tasting it in my mouth. It's backed up that I, far. I bet you have, and not your own. <laughs> that's the problem with you. That's what I'm, uh, you know, I, I have the feeling, and I don't have details, that you've done some sick, disgusting <laughs> things, and yet a public bathroom disgusts you. Like any time at a football game, it's just, you know, everyone goes at halftime, there's those long lines, yeah. because people, can, normal people can have their schedule, and they go, now's the opportune time to go. Yeah. I can take advantage of that. Not I'm, me. I'm, not, I'm the guy who's the first one to use the sink. I'm that guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> because I have to go. And, uh, you know, I was told when I was a kid that don't hold on to it. It's poison. It'll back up into you. It'll kill you. No, I got gallons of poison just sitting. No. And I cannot go in a public restroom. It's just the worst. I've had to use this one on occasion here. Now, I, I noticed that you have Master Poe actually guarding the door for you, that he'll take you down, open the door, lock it behind you, and then stand guard so no one sees the pee-pee. Yeah, exactly. That way I'm in there by myself. It's the only way to work. And, and, and you're crying while you're doing it. <laughs> Why did this happen, God? Why? What is wrong with me? It feels like a disease. <laughs> And in this bathroom, they keep the window open to the alley. Yeah, you know, to air that uh, that mother out. Yeah, because there's some kind of a plumbing backup here. It just smells like Canada. Oh yeah, there is a stink in there. So, and I have to pull that window too. I don't know if I think uh, Spider Man's going to scale the building or ninjas are going to come in the bathroom. But I just want to apologize because I forgot we were on in Canada. And I had no idea. I now have to start watching my references. They I, know the smell. <laughs> I tr well, I meant because of outhouses. I, I, I don't know. What, so you will never drop mud. Oh, anywhere. no. You've never no. done it? Never. What about when you were a kid school? No. Nope. In fact, one time I was even sick in school. It was 11th grade. I remember I was a junior at Pinellas Park Senior High School. Go Patriots. Right. And... I, I got six stomach cramps and everything. Yeah. And I actually messed myself. You shit yourself. I shit myself rather than go to the bathroom. And then I didn't even go to clean up. You sat in it? Yeah. I just let it crust between the cheeks, man. I was not Why going in go that bathroom. Why didn't you at least go home instead of sitting there? There was perfect one attendance record? There, yeah. There was. <laughs> I didn't want to mess that up. There was one period left. I had history. That oh. was it. That so what? You're sitting in shit. I don't care. I would leave school if a friend had a half a joint. I was out the door, <laughs> let alone if I shit my pants. I had 50 minutes of history to go. And, and was I... everyone going, do you smell shit in here? <laughs> you are. There's something wrong with you. Oh, that class, I just sat so cross-legged and clenched. You know, not wanting to release any odors. Crying? Any shit smell. <laughs> I'm so dirty. I didn't want to have to get it, get up to turn in a paper or anything. What was it, an uncle that did this to you? What happened? I have no memory of any abuse. It had to have been abuse. What 11th grade person would sit in their own shit rather than using a bathroom or going home? I would be able to take a shit in a rusty bucket at a hockey game. Put me out on the blue line. Oh. If I have to go, I have to go. And everyone else can turn their head. Then they put the octopus. But I'm not going to sit and shit my pants without doing anything about it. Yeah, I just, I thought I could hold it. I mean, it's years of training, years of control, of always holding it. You're gonna, and you're, that one slipped past me. You're going to damage something. Something felt, something smelt damaged that day. And then I, riding home on the bus, it was just really starting to reek. Oh, stop. You know, and I'm just, you know, there's always the retarded kid on the bus that you can go, oh, what did he do? So you know? disgusted. I'm so disgusted. Is it because of your lifestyle that, I don't know, you've just got a massive bunghole there? What is, how can you not hold it in? Is it just dropping out of you like a horse it, walking down the street? It was very loose. I had some sort of stomach virus or something. You know, hey, Earl, would you do me a favor and get him one of those horse bags for his ass? Because <laughs> I don't want there any problems here. Right on it. So what do, do we have? Do not get that. <laughs> what do we have to do with you if you have to use a bathroom? You want us all to leave the building? That would actually be about the only way. And then I would even worry about hearing the elevator bell ringing in the hallway that someone's on the floor. I'm going to send it towards the men's room. I'm going to send out an XM memo that if Fez has to uh, use the bathroom, everyone needs to leave the building.
and everybody will understand. It's kind of like a fire gr- uh, drill. It's just like a more of a shit drill. Why don't we do this? I'll get your rusty bucket, and we'll start and try. <laughs> no. There's no way I could go in a rusty bucket. What is the uh, what is the type of therapy where it's just a little bit at a time? Baby steps? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's baby <laughs> steps, but it's some kind of conditioning. Maybe you go in there and just try farting for the for a first week or two. See if that's okay. See, I don't want to leave my smell in there. <laughs> that would just be devastating to me. That would be devastating to me if I walked out of there and someone else walked in. You know that stink that's in there now, the cannabis smell you yeah. said? I'm always worried that I'm going to leave and someone new to the men's room is going to walk in there and just attribute it to me. Like I shit out a bad mackerel or something. We're all humans. We <laughs> understand that sometimes you shit out a bad mackerel. No one cares. <laughs> that's what you got. If you were five, I would have this conversation with you. I don't know what to do. I don't think anyone did have this conversation with me at five. Did they know that they did something to you mentally, you think? Was there some kind of odd potty training that went on? Not that I can recall. I remember one time, uh, mother took us all to the beach, me and my brother Corky and my sister, and we were there maybe. I thought she should take you to the zoo. They always take (laughs) retards to the zoo. We went to the beach. What is it, the monkeys that you guys love? (laughs) They're funny. But we went to the beach, and I had to shit like 20 minutes after being there. And they're, like, telling me to go in the water yes. and everything else. And I couldn't do it. I could not do it. And the pressure that was on me. Right. I was pro- I remember being, like, four years old, I think. And the pressure. And we actually had to go home. I ruined the day at the beach. Because, because I wouldn't, couldn't I wouldn't go. go, like, in their public restroom on the beach. And you're in the station wagon. Faster, Mommy, faster. <laughs> yeah. The bad feeling is coming. The bad feeling was there until I got home. Then you couldn't go? Then it's like, you better march your little self in there and go. Right. And then I couldn't. So that was, that was, uh, that's like my earliest bad bathroom experience I can remember. (sighs) I don't understand it. Why don't I, uh, why don't, uh, every day you'll go into the bathroom and just practice burping first. See if you can go in there and burp. I don't think I can burp. Seriously, between me and you, there's something really wrong with you. Absolutely, you're insane. I just can't deal with any of that. It just nothing works when I go in there. It just all shuts down you, like an L.A. power grid. Are you seeing a therapist now? No, not right now. You should be. And this should be the opening day. I can't like piss. Like I'm going to be able to go in there and say I can't piss. I'll, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to write a note that just says my fat buddy can't piss in public. I, you don't have to write fat. Bill me. Just charge me the the hundreds of thousands of dollars it's going to take to fix you. You don't have to write fat. You don't have to write it in all capitals and underline it twice. And I, I drew a uh, kind of a fat snowman with a little tiny peach and just piss trickling down. Is that supposed to be me? Oh, no. It's just a funny picture. God, you're a sick man, though. Yeah, you're it's really horrible s- to live this way. You're a sick man. It would be nice. I'd love to be like you and shit on center ice. I can't do it. Just I can't try. pull that off. Here is uh, Palio. Palio, you're on Fez. Buddies, welcome yeah. to XM. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to be here. You were talking about the fear there, Fezzy. Yeah. And, Ronnie, you said uh, when you go right into the sink, in the, like for halftime, just right. going for the sink, every sink was filled up. I took the top off the garbage can, started peeing, and it thought like, hey, I was crazy doing this. About right. six other guys just jumped right there. Like we were pissing out a campfire. You see that, Fezzy? Well, you know what, Fez? I bet you've never even had that uh, uh, feeling of pissing out a campfire when the stench hits you <laughs> of uh, smoke and urine. No. It's like three bad things. Pissing outside, the stench, and fire. Did your, uh, did your dad ever take you camping? No, we never went camping. Because of... Is your dad that way? No, my dad can go pretty much anywhere. On you? Did something like that happen? No. Hmm. Uh, Joe, you're on Ron and Fez. How you doing, buddy? Hey, welcome. Hey, uh, Fez, I'll have you pissing in front of a urinal with both of your hands on the side of your waist, sitting there all confident and proud if you just do what I suggest. Go ahead. I would love for that to happen for him. This, this, I used to have that problem, too. But, for example, when I'd be at a Redskins game, what I do before I go into the bathroom, I look at, at a good-looking chick. And then when I get in front of the urinal, I close my eyes and pretend like I'm fucking her. And what I do is right before I come, 
I pretend like I'm coming, and instead of coming, I'm just I just. All right. I I'm going to have a group therapy that you're going to be joining with Fez, <laughs> because you're every bit as insane as him. And by the way, the naked woman thing is not going to work for him. That'll disappear up into his up into his gut somewhere. Where are you, Pishi? <laughs> that thing will roll back up inside of him. Now, one thing that I have to do, if I'm going to piss in public, I have to do this. I have to try to think of everything I've drink, I've drank, yeah. like over the past two days. Like, I have to just imagine myself drinking a six-pack or, you know, just drinking way too much water. I have to just think of all that liquid in me to build up in my mind to get it back out. Hey, uh, Adam, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Ronnie, after you got done peeing, did you offer that chick two bucks? Oh, you know what? I should probably tell that story. This is another time we were out to eat in New York. What restaurant were we at, Fez? This was Morton's Steakhouse. So Morton's Steakhouse, Fez is eating the 98-ounce uh, steak, right? Whatever it was. Yeah, the super uh, porterhouse for two. I mean, this was the, the biggest steak you've ever seen in your life. He's, we're having drinks. We're basically living like the Rat Pack. It was just a great night. I go downstairs. I, uh, I, I use the bathroom. I wash my hands. And there's an elderly black gentleman standing there in a lime green suit. And as I wash my hands, I reach over the towel. I hand him $2. And he goes, uh, I don't work here. <laughs> and it was just an old guy in a lime green suit. I thought he was the bathroom tender. So I go like this. I know. I give everybody two bucks. That's my thing. Um, uh, I just hand around and give everybody two bucks. And I made him take the two bucks like I'm some kind of crazy millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> handing out silver dollars. <laughs> who's handing out two dollars to elderly black men. Ronnie, two bucks. That's my game. All right. Everybody gets two bucks. Why can't I enjoy myself on a night out? Uh, Fez, your thing is, has brought up other people, I guess, that uh, share in some of your problems. Here's uh, Jay. Jay, you're on run Fez. Hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah. Hey, Jay. I, lo I love your show. Thank you. Hey, uh, when I was a kid, I could only take a shit at Sears because I had such big shit that my house toilet would always back up and my mom would get pissed off at me. So from that point on, I'd only go to Sears and take a dump. Now, why Sears? Was there something industrial about their toilet? Or <laughs> yeah. they had one yeah, of those big industrial center. toilets that just yeah, sucks everything down to the was, center of the earth? Yeah, they would practically, if you were sitting on the toilet, it'd suck your eyeballs in it. You know, was, Earl's the same way that he won't <laughs> use a bathroom unless he has a plunger with him. Yeah. When definitely. you stayed at Fez's house, you had to ask for the plunger. Oh, yeah. That was true. I'm sitting there. I'm working on the computer. He comes down the stairs. He looks at me. He goes, do you have a plunger? And I thought, and I immediately said, what did you do? <laughs> right. What did you do in my bathroom? And he hadn't even gone in it yet. He just knew trouble was on the horizon. <laughs> yeah, my mud is quite atomic. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Didn't P-Funk do that? Atomic mud? <laughs> Dog. Oh. Uh, hey, uh, Michael, you're on a Fez. All right, I got a question for you. Yeah. You're out at the bar and you're drinking beer. What do you do? Do you go to the bathroom or do you stand there and piss your pants? Well, you said uh, in those situations, if you have a full stall and a door, you can muscle your way through it. I, right? can, because... I can pull it out, but I mean, I have to be, like when I go in li uh, get in line yeah. at a bar to go to the men's room, oh my gosh, it's agony at that point because I have to wait till the very last second or just nothing's going to happen. Even when there's a full stall with a with a with a door and all, you're still intimidated and yeah. dropping mud out of the question. Then. That's totally out. Of, that'll never happen. That'll <laughs> never happen in my lifetime. You what? want put it on my tombstone. He never shit in public. I. Right, what about this, Fez? When you have to be in the hospital and they're going to give you a, a bedpan one day, you'll just take a knife and kill yourself. Yeah, I'll beat myself in the head with the bedpan till I'm dead. Master Poe brought us in some food. I don't know where it came from or who it came from, but. Uh, very nice, huh? Yeah, I heard it was like a, a big ass card holder. Brought big it in. ass member from the board. He got you guys some sandwiches. Oh, we. Uh, but I where, didn't get a name. Where did it come in from? Is, is there a name on the bag too? It looks great. Cat's Deli. Cat's Deli. Oh, Cat's Deli is the best <laughs> place in New York. I started crying. I was eating in there one time. What are you clapping for, Earl? You're already getting the plunger out. That's how excited <laughs> you are to see these bags. No, I was just saying how good cats. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Amazing. Harry, you're feeling the same way in there. Harry is a guy who, if there's anything left over, he will take it home to his dad. 
Yeah, almost like he's in charge of the tribe now. Right. Where he's the hunter and he's uh, out uh, and he's got the meal for the entire clan. One night he took home pizza crust that people hadn't eaten and said that his dad would enjoy it. They they like anything you know. They crust like though. It, I don't think it was crust. Yes, it I took was some crust. Pizza. It but there was crust. also crust in there. Yeah, but it was attached to the rest of the pizza. It wasn't just and like he I, says, I got breadsticks for you, Mom and Dad. And then we would always send them out to uh, get us sandwiches when he was an intern. And he was so hungry. What he would do is order something on He would have like an egg salad. And he would go, oh, can you put mustard on that too? So Fez would bite into it, be turned off, and then he would finish Fez's sandwich. That's a legend. That is so true. Why and did you ruin Fez's sandwich every time? I would never. I never tried. It was just a mistake. I was just very bad at uh, at doing that. You'll get me some sort of bread that I don't want or something, and I never, ever finish the sandwich, and it just goes into Harry's big seal gullet. I just toss it up to him like a herring. And how about today when we saw him having a mint, and he tried to shove it back into his pocket before everybody could ask him for one? It, I was embarrassed because it was mints that you get at a, like a wedding, like those free, like... Uh, uh, that they put them on the table. So that's, I had run out of my regular mints. Your regular mints. What do you do? Go to a newsstand or a cashier or something? I'll have my regular. My regular mints. Well, the ones that aren't from a wedding, you know. He didn't finish the fruit cup there. He took it home to his mom and dad. Hey, Dave, you're on the Run of Fest show. What's up, guys? Hey, buddy. Glad to have you on. Thank uh, you very much. I'm a fan, uh, now a big uh, RNF fan. I'm in the New York market, so I appreciate uh, basically uh, been hearing your names for a while now. Thank you. Uh, little story, I'm in uh, South Jersey, I work for a utility company, and uh, when you're out there, you know, you're going house to house, you really can't uh, find a bathroom, so sometimes you got to find a hole in the basement and just drop a deuce, you know? Have you ever done that, Fez? Could you be able, like, when you go to Europe... A lot of the toilets are just a hole in the floor. Would you be able to oh, use them? Oh, those are the worst. That would be rough. That would be really, really hard to do. I, I don't think I could. walking in on you? I think it would be days. How do you do traveling, like in hotels and all? A hotel, I can, that's like my bathroom. Right. And there's no one else in the room. I'm fine. If I was sharing a room with someone, I wouldn't be able to crap. Yeah. <laughs> that would be it. It'd be over. So a dorm situation, impossible. Impossible. I had to, when I did go to college and lived in the dorm, yeah. I had to wait till the roommate they assigned me. It would either leave, uh -huh. you know, and I knew he was going to class and would be gone for a while. Or I, and then eventually the next semester I had to get like a room to myself because I was just, uh, Because you're mental shit. illness. Uh, Matt, you're around Fez. Hey, uh, Fez, I, I feel your pain. I have the same problem too, or I just, I shit in public and, uh, it all happened. I was eight years old in my Walmart, and I had shit. I, 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 your phone's breaking up, but it's something that happened to you when you were a little kid, though, right? Yeah, when I was eight, and I went to Walmart, and I was taking a dump, and two guys walked in, and they just started, like, choking and saying, oh, my God, who died in here? And it just traumatized me so terrible that I could now, but I can't shit in public anymore. But do you think it even had anything to do with you, or maybe the bathroom just stunk? No, it was definitely me, because I had some pretty bombs. Yeah. And then I think, uh, Ronnie, if you... Ah, oh, man, I can't hear you. But I like taking this back to a childhood traumatic experience, which I'm, I'm sure is what happened with you, Fez. Yeah, the only thing I could think of, though, is the pressure at the beach, which will be the name of my next novel. But you know what? I bet there was something even before that, like at a two- or three-year-old, that had you at four and five too nervous. Right. I remember potty training even. Yeah. I can go back that far with my mem memories. Right. Now, go be sure, because it was three weeks ago. You really <laughs> haven't finished yet. I just need public potty training. Uh, all right. It is the Ron and Fez show, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Here is... Uh, Maddie, Maddie, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Maddie. Hey, what's up, boys? Yeah. Hey, I'm down here on the uh, Mexican border, and I got a question for Fezzy. Go ahead. Can he do it uh, in a Gatorade bottle after being on surveillance for 16 hours protecting the homeland? Would he be able to do that? Would you be able to use a Gatorade bottle, like, on the uh, on the road or something? If I was in the car by myself? No. You're in a full car? No. No, wouldn't be able to happen. Fezzy, you're protecting the homeland, brother. And now, I think this. Any guys that have ever been out drinking and on a road trip, your friend has been driving, and you've stood up and went out the window while he was driving. Not me. I can't imagine not having that experience 
and being an American male. I can't imagine anything worse. Worst? Worst <laughs> than that. Wor it's, it's worse just, than that. It's just worse. It's not worst. Oh! Ron and Fez. XM202.